happy day to you, our lovely viewers, and welcome to another episode of Women on the Watch. At Women on the Watch, we are committed to exposing time-tested principles for your personal and relationship development. The idea is to make these time-tested principles practically applicable to your day-to-day -day relationship and personal development challenges. My name is Wonu Adetayo. In the last series, we have been looking at the waiting room. And last episode, we looked at the waiting room of early widowhood. As we interrogated the subject of the early widowhood, we looked at the significance of widows. And we were reminded that we have close to 250 million widows all over the world. And also, we could imply that we have nearly 250 million female heads of households pointing to the significance of widows to our society. In that particular edition, we also looked at the struggles of the widows. And we looked at about seven of the struggles of the widows. Now, knowing fully well that the struggles are there to be overcome, today we would look at the stages of widowhood and we will also look at other topics including the support for the widows. In this second edition of The Waiting Room of Early Widowhood, our anchor scripture remains Ruth chapter 1, verses 3 to 5 and verses 8 to 11. Ruth chapter 1, verses 3 to 5 and verses 8 to 11. And Elimelech, Naomi's husband, died, and she was left and her two sons. And they took them wives of the women of Moab. The name of the one was Orpah, and the name of the other, Ruth. And they dwelt there about ten years. And Marlon and Chilion died also, both of them. And the woman was left of her two sons and her husband. Verses 8 to 11. And Naomi said unto her two daughters-in-law, Go, return each to her mother's house. The Lord deal kindly with you, as ye have dealt with the dead and with me. The Lord grant you that ye may find rest, each of you, in the house of her husband. Then she kissed them, and they lifted up their voice and wept. And they said unto her, Surely we will return with thee unto thy people. And Naomi said, Turn again, my daughters. Why will ye go with me? Are there yet any more sons in my womb, that they may be your husbands? So we start by looking at the stages of widowhood. Now, irrespective of race or tribe, widows are expected to pass through approximately three stages of widowhood under the word three Gs, three stages. The first stage is grief, that's the first G. The second stage is growth, that's the second G. And the third stage is grace. So the three stages are grief, growth, and grace. Now, we want to examine each of these stages in the life of a widow. Stage one, which is the grief stage. We can see this in the life of Naomi. When she announced to people on her return to Bethlehem, in Ruth chapter 1, verses 20 to 21. In Ruth chapter 1, 
verses 20 to 21. Listen to her words. And she said unto them, Call me not Naomi. Call me Mara. For the Almighty had dealt very bitterly with me. I went out full, and the Lord hath brought me home again empty. Why then call ye me Naomi? Seeing the Lord had testified against me, and the Almighty had afflicted me. As you can see, grief is a relatively less understood emotion. The experience of grief is unique. In the case of Naomi, you could see her almost getting depressed, almost angry, almost accusing God, and almost looking at herself as if there was nothing meaningful in her life. You see, for a widow experiencing grief, when to cry, where to cry, in fact, what prompts the pain can be very, very different. The phases of grief in general will include initial shock followed by disbelief. Look at the case of Naomi. Lose husband first and then suddenly all the three children. So if you were even in a state of grief, I mean shock, then you enter into disbelief. Really? Is it true? And then sometimes anger sets in. And if you are not careful from anger, depression will set in. The grief of the widow is not just about the lost husband. It's about the lost dreams of the future that the woman had planned together with her husband. It's about the advice of a father that will be needed for the growing children that is already lost. The grief is about the absence of the husband during events like the graduation of the children, like the marriages of the children, when these events begin to materialize, eventually, on its own timetable, the grieving party will decide to move into acceptance. As we could see it play out in the case of Ruth and Naomi, they settled into the mood that precedes the growth stage. Because it's only when the widow gets out of grief and settles into acceptance that the possibility of growth emerges. What many of us have discovered is that the stages that people go through in grief may not be in a very predictable manner. But generally, after grief, the party once accepted, the situation that he or she is in, she goes into the growth stage. So the second stage of widowhood is growth stage after grieving. Now, the growth stage starts when the grieving widow gives herself permission to begin to experiment as Ruth later did. She experimented in Ruth chapter 2 verses 2 and 3. Ruth chapter 2, verses 2 and 3. We see Ruth beginning to fend for herself for purposes of survival. We see that she, we see what she said, we see what she did. She says, Ruth the Moabite said unto Naomi, Let me now go to the field and glean ears of corn after him in whose sight I shall find grace. And she said unto her, Go, my daughter. And she went and came and gleaned in the field after the reapers. And her harp was to light on a part of the field belonging unto Boaz, who was of the kindred of Elimelech. You see, growth for the widow starts when the widow begins to go out to fend for herself. She can do this through her family, through her friends, or through the extended family of her husband, as it happened in the case of Ruth. In this stage of growth, the widow stops calling a pity party. The widow stops comparing herself with others. In this phase, the widow comes out of her shell, begins to master her emotions, 
and begins to take practical steps to manage the widowhood season, no matter how short or protracted that period may be. Remember, we have looked at stage one, grief, stage two, growth, and now we go to stage three, which is grace. That's the three G's of the development of the widow. Stage three, grace. In this stage, the widow, under divine influence, begins to experience unmerited favor. And we could see that play out in the life of Ruth. She experienced unmerited favor because God made Ruth to come to the notice of Boaz in Ruth chapter 2 and verse 5. Ruth chapter 2 and verse 5. Then said Boaz unto his servant that was set under the reapers, Whose damsel is this? And Ruth found favor with Boaz. Boaz gave her free access to his resources in Ruth chapter 2 from verses 8 to 17. And you will notice that from that very day, Ruth never lacked food for herself nor for her mother-in-law. This grace eventually terminated the widowhood stage of Ruth and she became the wife of Boaz. The Bible tells us in Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 and 9. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. It says, For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. So we have looked at the three phases of widowhood, grief, after acceptance, then growth, and after growth, then grace. Now, we want to look at the circle of widowhood. I told you that God is the protector, the defender of widows. And so, there is no other person other than God that understands the plights, the pains, and the pressures of the widows. It is for this reason that our God decided to be their minister, advocate, defender, provider, and protector. God made adequate arrangements for the succor of the widows. In fact, in the Bible, there are about 80 different direct references to widows in scripture. But today, we will briefly examine five categories of succor for the widows. Five categories of succor for the widows. The first is by God the Father. You see, God the Father keeps a careful eye on the widow. And God the Father is profoundly concerned for the widow as well as the fatherless children. The Bible records in Psalms 68 verse 5. Psalms 68 verse 5 describes God the Father as a father of the fatherless, a judge of the widows, is God in his holy habitation. Deuteronomy chapter 10 and verse 18 declares, Deuteronomy 10, 18 declares, He doth execute the judgment of the fatherless and widow, and loveth the stranger in giving him food and raiment. So you see, God himself provides for the widow raiment and food. And Psalms 146 verse 9a, Psalms 146 verse 9a says, The Lord preserved the strangers. He relieved the fatherless and the widow. You see, God made provision for the widow. Even in Deuteronomy chapter 24 verse 20. Deuteronomy 24 20 says, When thou beatest thine olive tree, <laughs> thou shalt not go over the bows again. It shall be for the stranger, for the fatherless, and for the widow. That's category one. God the Father, the succor of the widows. The second category we will find in the Old Testament prophets. You see, God loves the widows. He didn't leave them. He didn't abandon them. The Old Testament prophets, they were also used of God to bring succor to widows. For example, the widow 
of the prophet was saved from her sons being taken by the prophet. We also notice the widow of Zarephath and her son were saved from starvation and death by the prophet. <laughs> Widows were fully integrated into participating in the Feast of Weeks and in the Feast of Tabernacles. Go and check in Deuteronomy chapter 16, verses 11 and 14. We come to the third category. We've looked at God the Father, Old Testament prophets, and some people may think, okay, it ends in the Old Testament. Absolutely not. In the New Testament, we find our Lord Jesus Christ expressing much care for widows. For example, on his journey, he came across the widow of Nain, whose only son had died, and mourners were following her to go and bury the son. But Jesus Christ restored him to his mother in Luke chapter 7, verses 11 to 17. And also, Jesus condemned those who took advantage of the widows. That's three categories already. God the Father, Old Testament prophets, and our Lord Jesus Christ. We still have two more categories of succor for the widows. The fourth category is the category of the apostles. You see, Apostle Paul calls us to honor widows in 1 Timothy chapter 5 and verse 3. Apostle Paul enjoins believers, honor widows. Also, Apostle James declared it is pure religion to visit the fatherless and the widows in their affliction. He declared this in 1 Timothy chapter 5 and verse 3. And now finally, we take a look at the fifth circle for widows, the category of the early and the modern church. The early church cared for widows to the extent of appointing seven men of good reputation, full of wisdom and Holy Ghost to preside over the care of the widows. You can read this in the book of Acts chapter 6 verses 1 to 6. In fact, on November 22, 2019, an All-Africa Congress of Churches deemed it fit to devote the conference to the plight of widows. And the 11th General Assembly of the All-Africa Congress of Churches, AACC, in July 2018, they called for the commitment of all churches to address the plight of widows in Africa. As we can see very clearly, widows are significant in our society. Their role is too important to be ignored. Their struggles are too painful for us to push aside. And it is for this reason that the entire next edition of the waiting room of widowhood will be devoted to the support for widows. Widows are to be supported by the society. Widows are to be supported by the church. Widows themselves are empowered to be a support unto themselves. And so today we have attempted to look at the stages of widowhood. The widow, after permitting herself to grieve for a while, must get into the mood of acceptance and then move to the growth stage. And when the widow begins to experiment in the growth stage, coming out of her shell, coming out of pity and depression, she gets into the third stage, which is the stage of grace. And by that grace, the widow masters the art of widowhood. And we have also looked at the soccer, five different categories of the soccer of the widows, starting with God the Father, then the Old Testament prophets, then we looked at our Lord Jesus Christ, we looked also at the early and the late church. And as you can see, God has never and will never leave the widow alone. As we conclude today's episode, 
I want to remind every widow that God loves you. He loves you very dearly with an everlasting love. He has made adequate plans for your succor. You will not be forsaken and you will not be abandoned. I urge you to join us in the final edition of the waiting room of widowhood in the next episode as we will be concluding the waiting room of widowhood by interrogating the subject of the support for widows. Till I come your way next week, this is one of our Adetayo, the shaper, urging you to hang in there, trust in the almighty God. He's making a way for you. And soon and very soon, you will graduate from the waiting room of widowhood. God bless you.